Founded in Mumbai, India almost 150 years ago, the Tata Group has grown into a sprawling conglomerate of over 100 companies in diverse sectors spread across the globe. With operations in more than 80 countries across six continents, the Tata Group operates across seven business sectors, including communications and information technology, engineering, materials, services, energy, consumer products and chemicals. Products and services are exported to 85 countries. The Tata Group is rapidly expanding its global footprint, with almost 60% of its revenues coming from outside India. Tata started its operations in Africa in Zambia in 1977. When the borders opened up in South Africa, the headquarters were moved to Johannesburg in 1994 with the establishment of Tata Africa Holdings. Tata now boasts an African footprint across 12 countries. To date, more than 1.6 billion US dollars has been invested on the continent, and further expansion is in the pipeline. Within the next few years, Tata will have operations in 20 African countries in sectors as diverse as automobile and IT consultancy, hospitality and energy, telecommunications and mining. Tata, the parent group which is based in India, um, is a very big entity. They bring a lot of that international experience to the African continent and I think that can be of supreme benefit to a lot of the countries that they're actually looking to participate in. The continent is in dire need of a lot of those kinds of industries where beneficiation actually takes place in Africa as opposed to just shipping out raw commodities and having the processing done elsewhere. India is a BRICS country and South Africa being a BRICS partner can learn a lot from how India has been able to really transform its economy uh, and, and show the world that even if you come from a developing economy, you can still be the standard by which a lot of countries can be judged by. Tata symbolizes the resilience of the Indian country, the entrepreneurship of India, and those are some of the lessons in one area which Africa can learn from. But from an economy perspective, the investment in, in these very countries are quite important in terms of helping these countries to, to be self-sufficient uh, and to partner with other like-minded countries. The African economy currently promises substantial levels of growth, but in order to achieve those levels of growth, we need investment in infrastructure, and that is what Tata offers to bring to the table, not just in terms of physical infrastructure, but also in terms of broader business infrastructure and economic infrastructure, all the way down to vehicles that would facilitate the movement of goods from uh, different sources of supply or to consumers for that matter. The first venture into Africa was made in 1977 with the establishment of Tata Zambia. The core business was the importation of commercial vehicles from India. Now, Tata Zambia is the market leader with a 65% market share in the medium and heavy commercial vehicle sector. There's a particular demand for tippers in the country. Taxa has put 20,000 medium and heavy commercial vehicles on South African roads and has a sales and service dealer network of 40. Currently, the company is making inroads into the high horsepower, extra heavy commercial vehicle segment. A high power range of truck trailers was introduced at the Johannesburg International Motor Show in October 2011. The aim is to secure a 10% market share in medium, heavy and extra heavy commercial vehicles in the next three to four years. That is a very challenging target for any company to face and certainly if a company could pull it off, Tata could. Companies on a large scale currently do have substantial spare capacity because markets have not been performing to the extent that we've seen in the past. So to have a 10% growth target over such a short period of time in a very protracted economic recovery is fairly ambitious. There certainly is scope or room to achieve it. The aim is to move 2,000 commercial vehicles per annum in the next three years. And with staff ready and willing to go the extra mile for their customers, the company looks set to achieve its goals. Little changes that South Africa market wants, that we see really within a month, two months, and the new vehicles come in and the changes have been done. All of that is possible in the whole Tata range.
Commercial vehicles are the mainstay of the business in Nigeria, where the automobile sector makes up 80% of the company's business. With its nerve center in Lagos, Tata Nigeria recently opened a branch office in Port Harcourt. It also has dealerships in Kanu, Abuja and Enubu. Soon to become active are Ibadan, Akuri and Benin City. Nigeria caters to four sectors in the automobile market, pickup trucks and small commercial vehicles, medium-sized distribution vehicles, construction vehicles and buses. Currently, 2,200 Tata vehicles can be seen on Nigerian roads and 8 million US dollars has been invested in that country to date. On the other side of the continent lies Tanzania, a relative newcomer in the Tata Africa stable. The business was established in 1995 in Dar es Salaam, the entry port for a large part of East Africa. Rwanda, Burundi, Malawi and part of the Congo depend on Dar es Salaam for their imports, so it is a good location for business investment. Tata vehicles are quite popular in this country now because we are the main suppliers of new vehicles and we have service parts and we offer guarantee for all vehicles that we are supplying. We have opened up about 18 service stations in all regions of this country. And the future looks bright for Tata in Tanzania. On the cards is a motor vehicle assembly plant. This will assist in the development of the local industry as Tata will be able to source various products used in the assembly process from local manufacturers. Although it is slowly making inroads into the rest of Africa, the passenger vehicle market is mainly concentrated in South Africa. Accordion Investments, a joint venture between Tata Africa and Imperial Holdings, imports light commercial and passenger vehicles and currently has a vehicle park of more than 150,000 units. The Indica and the Telco line when we started in 94 were very successful. In fact, we were the first importer or any brand that after launch, in the first six months, we've sold more than 1,000 units that we've reported to NAMSA. So we were very, very successful in the beginning. And the evidence is there with all the units on the South African roads. Accordion Investments has a presence in several neighboring countries such as Lesotho, Swaziland, Botswana and Namibia. This encompasses an extensive network of 50 service centers in the Southern African region. In 2008, Tata Motors acquired the Jaguar and Land Rover businesses from Ford, effectively establishing Jaguar Land Rover as one of its wholly owned subsidiaries. Just a jump to the north is Kenya, where the business started with the importation of commercial vehicles, but is now expanding into ICT and pharmaceuticals. Soon to follow will be ventures in the energy and hospitality sectors. After a two hour drive from Nairobi towards the southern border with Tanzania, one arrives at Lake Magadi. It is one of the hottest and driest places in Kenya. Here, Tata Chemicals has been operating a soda ash plant since 2006. There are two plants at Magadi. One produces standard grade soda ash, the other premium grade. The premium grade plant is relatively new, having been completed in 2007. 2008, the world collapsed as you know, and as a result we went through a fairly difficult time to sell or to operate that plant to its full capacity. Thereafter, it has picked up and now we are operating at about 70 to 80 percent of capacity. And for a sawdash plant operating at that level in these current times, that's considered quite, uh, quite satisfactory. The largest end use for soda ash is glass, whether for bottles and tableware or architectural and motor vehicle glass. Soda ash is also used in the manufacture of detergents, sodium silicate, and in a range of other chemical processes. As the only industry in this arid area, Tata Chemicals Mahadi is very active in bolstering the community around it. The people of the Mahadi district rely heavily on the continued success of the Tata operations in the area for employment as well as community initiatives spearheaded by the company. Mm -hmm. 
Hospitality is another sector that is taking on prominence for Tata in Africa. With a global presence of 15 luxury hotels under the banner of Indian Hotel Company, the Taj currently operates two five-star establishments in Africa, one in Cape Town, the other in Lusaka. The Taj Cape Town is, in my opinion, very much embodies a normal Indian-based Taj property. Within India, the majority of the Taj luxury hotels are either beautiful old buildings of historical significance, a number of converted palaces in India that are actually now uh, functioning as Taj hotels. Uh, so I think Taj Cape Town definitely fits that heritage and that kind of luxury feel, firstly as a building. We are two old historical buildings ourselves. One of them was the original South African Reserve Bank in Cape Town and that was built in the 1920s. And the other building is the old, uh, what we call our Temple Chambers building. It's a white-faced building that was built in 1896. The age and the style, architectural style, and the solidity of those two beautiful old buildings really are at the heart of what we now have as the hotel. A contemporary architectural element is brought to the 17 glass-fronted floors that rise above the historical base of the Taj Cape Town. This opens the rooms to expansive views of the mountain or the parliamentary precinct. The total project cost for the hotel was just over 500 million rands. After five years of planning and construction, the Taj Cape Town opened in 2010, the beautiful baby sister of the Taj Pamodzi in Lusaka. The Pamodi Hotel was 11 years old in 1990 when the Taj Group signed a 10-year contract to manage the hotel. In 1995, the Zambian government decided to privatize the hotel. Tata Zambia acquired a 70% stake and renamed it Taj Pamodi. It was given a complete facelift in 2003 at a cost of 8 million US dollars. Both the Taj hotels in Africa offer a range of superior services and amenities to their guests from standard executive rooms to the ultimate luxury of the presidential suites. Restaurants, spas and conference facilities. Striking in both is the welcoming faces of the hotel staff. The other thing that brings home to me the Tajness of this hotel is if you travel to India, the warmth and engagement and efficiency within the Taj properties is pretty legendary. And when we were opening this hotel, it was really important that not just the physical element of the hotel and the product, but definitely the service and the people we employ and how they give service to our guests was of absolute critical importance. So we put a huge amount of emphasis before we opened on the training, the selection and the detail. The Taj Cape Town provides employment to 250 people from the Cape. The Taj Pamodzi in Lusaka partners with local producers and suppliers to stock the kitchens. This encourages small businesses to deliver the highest quality produce, which helps uplift the community around the hotel. And with Livingston being the tourist capital of Zambia, Tata Zambia is looking into possibilities there. Whether it will be an acquisition of an existing hotel or a Greenfields venture still has to be determined. About an hour's flight from Lusaka in a light aircraft and another hour's drive in a 4x4 over rough roads, and the traveller arrives at the Itezi Teji hydroelectric project on the ITT Dam on the Kafue River. It is about 230 kilometres upstream from the Kafue Gorge power station. A 50-50 public-private partnership between Tata Africa and Zesco, the Zambian energy sector company, the project will increase Zambia's total installed electricity capacity to meet the national demand. With a total estimated cost of 231 million US dollars based on a 30% equity and 70% debt, about 70 million US dollars will be provided by the two shareholders, Tata Africa and Zesco. The energy sector in Zambia has come a very long way. I think in uh, 1994 is when they had their first independent power producer actually come on stream. So this was uh, Copper Belt Energy buying 
the uh, coal concern from ZCCM, which is a government-owned entity. And from there, we've then seen um, that method of power generation develop. So between Tata and government, they've actually partnered on this uh, project at Iteji Iteji. There are some spin-offs there for other industries within the country as well. They're also looking to create hundreds of jobs off that project. So that's a very positive thing. If they can add 250 uh, megawatts to the Zambian power supply grid, that would obviously have positive impact for the country. We would view the partnership in Zambia on two fronts. Firstly, in terms of its contribution to energy within the Southern African region, the Southern African power pool. The second commendable aspect of this partnership is Tata's experience and ability to make public-private partnerships work uh, in an aspect of uh, economic development that's very challenging, especially uh, very difficult to sell in emerging markets or amongst emerging economies. After 25 years of operation, the project will transfer entirely to the government of Zambia. The project will double the water supply and sewage system in the area, reinforce the power supply to the district hospital, and contribute to social development of the local community. This is one of the Tata Group's endearing values. Tata sees itself as a participant in the development of the countries in which it operates, a participant who is in it for the long haul. In 2012, South African-based diversified resources company Exaro and Tata Power launched a joint venture company, Synergy, poised to take advantage of renewable energy projects in South Africa and the continent. The Tata Automobile Company South Africa head office in Binoni houses a state-of-the-art training center where training is conducted on a cost-free basis. The training is offered to dealership personnel, fleet operators, various government organizations and university students. The Tata trains a lot of interesting people. In fact, it's such a diverse company. I've been with the, the training division of Tata Commercial Vehicles for the past four years. My previous experience was with the SAPS, South African Police Services. Currently, we train around about 54 of their garages and we do our training program in conjunction with their needs analysis for training. We also do training for specialized government departments such as uh, Kenyan Defense Force for uh, South African Air Force who have our vehicles as well. Among the many projects and initiatives that point to Tata Africa's commitment to the continent is its postgraduate scholarship program. Thus far the company has contributed close to 10 million rand to the scholarship program. In the first year of the scholarships, 10 postgraduate students from the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg benefited. In 2008, the scope was expanded to include the universities of Stellenbosch and KwaZulu-Natal. We felt that training and skills was lacking in South Africa, and if we would support that at the right level. And so we chose the post-graduation level because we felt that this will build up future leaders in the country. And so we started in 2006 and as we uh, go on I think we'll make this scholarship very prestigious and that's what uh, our, our endeavor is towards working with all the universities in South Africa. The scholarship becomes prestigious because of the achievements of those that have received the scholarship. I do know that the Tata Africa under your leadership shares this commitment to contribute to social development in and of our communities. This is evident in the investment Tata Africa is making and has made in training the future scholars and leaders of our country. The Tata Group uh, represents what we say leadership and trust. And that says it all. So we have uh, made huge commitment to Africa. One of the things we have seen that we have gone into mainly uh, uh, areas of investment which are greenfield. So we made a commitment that whatever we'll start is new. We've actually created new jobs, new manpower, new skill sets through these companies. For the future, well, I need to finish my master's first, obviously. Then I'm hoping to sort of get into industry. But I think what's also more important is to what this shows us is that you need to have a social component too your basic self. Over and above this flagship education scholarship program, Tata companies are investing in developing women scientists on the continent 
as well as initiating a number of training academies in supporting information technology, communication and manufacturing sectors throughout Africa. The Tata Group ventured into telecommunications in South Africa when the opportunity arose to invest in the second network operator. SNO Communications was set up as the direct competition to the parastatal fixed line operator Telcom in 2006. Now known as Neotel, the company's business services were launched in November 2007 and consumer services in May 2008. The Tata Group owns 68.5% of Neotel. 61.5% of which belongs to Tata Communications and 7% to Tata Africa. Strategically we had started uh, investing in infrastructure and over the last little less than four years or thereabouts we've been investing in fibre infrastructure and we have about 6,700 kilometres of fibre now laid in South Africa along with that wireless access mechanisms like WiMAX and NCDMA to provide uh, voice and data solutions to business as well as consumer customers. This infrastructure is connected to all the four submarine cable systems that connect South Africa to the world today and a fifth one coming up early next year, so all five. So Neotel's unique value proposition is to be able to connect and provide communications and services to businesses as well as consumers within South Africa and enabling South Africa to reach out to any part of the world that businesses or consumers choose to use. The telecommunications marketplace is worth about 160 billion rand. About a quarter of that, or around 43 billion rand, sits with the fixed line industry. Neotel has a 5% market share of this given its revenues for the last year. The focus may be on South Africa at the moment, but expansion into the rest of the continent into the future is not excluded. Tata Consultancy Services, or TCS, is one of the flagship companies in the Tata Group. It focuses on the IT industry from a services standpoint. Having originated in India, and now with a global footprint, TCS has offered services in South Africa since 1994. In 2007, it became a fully-fledged subsidiary of the parent company. TCS is, uh, obviously has a significant operation there in South Africa, and we also have uh, offices in Botswana and also in Kenya. And then in the other African countries where we're operating, we operate primarily through Tata Africa, uh, which is a facility and a capability that uh, TCS can leverage from the Tata Group, which works very well for us. Focus areas are key industries such as the banking and financial services, telecommunications, energy resources and utilities, mining and the government sector. What our strategy then is to focus on the key brands within each of these particular industries because that's where we will see maximum growth. And then we will take that model and leverage it into Africa, not only directly into Africa where we identify opportunities, but also following our customers into Africa where they need our competencies and capabilities as they expand their operations and their businesses into Africa. Tata Steel KwaZulu-Natal is a subsidiary of Tata Steel Limited in India and Africa. The chrome business is the value chain of Tata Steel in India and the decision was taken in 2002 to set up its first Greenfields ferrochrome plant overseas in Richards Bay, South Africa. Construction started in August of 2006 and the first furnace was commissioned on the 3rd of April 2008. The plant now has two furnaces capable of producing 150,000 tons of ferrochrome per year. With future plans of setting up another two furnaces, Richards Bay will move up to a production of 300,000 tons. Tata has a structured and long-term approach to mining in Africa. Richards Bay is growing substantially and the growth prospects for the future supported by Transnet's development strategies in the region are also very promising. So we have no doubt that the ferrochrome plant would be ideally positioned to take advantage of those growth prospects as well as promote the green message within an area of our economy or within an area of our country that strongly is desirous of such a message. Ferrochrome smelting may traditionally be regarded as a man's world, but women are making inroads into the industry and are making their presence felt at Richards Bay. Everything in the plant is represented on the SCADA system. When something needs to be done outside, I can move the equipment like the belts, I can start equipment 
for people outside. And then also I regulate the furnaces operations. Of the 165 permanent employees at Richards Bay, only five or six are expatriates. It is Tata's philosophy that local people should be given the opportunity to develop within the company. As a chamber, we're also particularly keen on the skills transfer that could result from the Richards Bay ferrochrome plant. Uh, we believe that Tata has a very strong model of skills transfer and of local skills development that's impl it's implementing not only in South Africa but in other parts of Africa. Um, that model would be based fundamentally on having leadership from abroad and importing skills from abroad until uh, the uh, local communities are able to rise to the skills challenge. With the growing demand for medium and heavy commercial vehicles in South Africa and its neighbours, Tata Africa saw the need to establish an assembly plant which was opened in Roslyn, north of Pretoria in July 2011. Production may expand later to include extra heavy commercial vehicles. The opening of this plant is a major milestone for the company. Established with an investment of 110 million rand, the plant can assemble from semi-knockdown kits, light, medium and heavy commercial vehicles ranging from 4 tons to 50 tons with an annualized capacity of 3,650 vehicles. From the automotive industry to hospitality, hydroelectric power to telecommunications, mining and chemicals, the Tata Group has made its influence felt in 12 countries on the continent, and more is to come. With the expansion plan including 20 countries over the five years, Tata is well on the way to increasing its footprint on the continent. In all our operations, we endeavor to approach business with the Tata philosophy of leadership with trust. And simply what this means is that we operate with a deliberate social consciousness, acutely aware of the responsibilities we have to the people and the communities that make our business possible. We are very excited about the growth story in Africa. And as the world begins to awaken to this amazing story and pursues opportunities in African markets, the Tata Group is expanding a pretty solid footprint. The industries and sectors earmarked for further investment are mining and minerals, power, ICT, hospitality, agriculture and logistics. Tata is committed to the African continent for the long haul.